everybody. Welcome to Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. No matter your age, it's never too late or too early to start thinking about making your money work for you. But where to start? That's why I'm here. I'm excited to lay out some key steps to help you save, grow, and invest your money in the smartest way possible. You may think that estate planning or legacy planning is only for the rich. I disagree. And I can't wait to tell you more about it right here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. You have worked hard all your life, accumulating wealth, and you probably want to make sure that when you pass away, you will leave all your assets to your family, friends, or some causes that are important to you. Because you know what? Without a proper documentation or planning, that may not happen according to your wishes. So, let me tell you how to do that. But before we get into that part, why is it so important to have this legacy planning? You may, you may tell me like, hey, Emmy, you know, this my beneficiary, everybody, they're going to get it anyway. Why don't just let them have it, you know, the easy way and don't have to do anything. Have you heard this story about our um, several famous people that passed away without having any proper planning? Well, let me tell you about some of them, okay? Uh, if you remember, recently we heard about Aretha Franklin. She passed away recently without any will, without any planning. You know what happened? The four, four sons, she has four sons that listed themselves as the interest party in her estate, on her estate. And then her, her nieces also listed or request the court to be appointed as personal representative of the estate as well. So as you can see, there's going to be issues that are going to have to be working out, going to be court fees involved, maybe fighting within the family. This battle mean a lot of expenses, court attorney fee, several expenses are going to go out there. And not only that, if you, if you remember Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson's another person. He passed away in 2009. Um, until now, everything's still not sorting out with a lot of assets that still tangle out who have right to what and where and who's going to get paid. So that's also another court battle for that. Who else? Um, James Brown. That's another person. Passed away in 2006. You know what? After a decade of fighting, this thing's still going on in court. You, you talk about how much court fees and attorney fees already. Well, as an, I, as an attorney too, I'm here, you know, I would like to have that fee, but how much would be left for your beneficiary? That's to be determined. Um, what about Jimi Hendrix? That's another person, the legendary um, singer, guitar player, player. You know what? He died back in 1970. And over 30 years of fighting, court battle, his estate finally settled in 2015. Long, long period of time to go through all that with all the fees and expenses. Now, even though you may say, hey, but those are people with big estate, and that's not going to apply to me because I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, the ordinary person and the estate planning probably not for me. Even if the state tax is not your issues. Okay, right now, as of 2018, you and I, individual like us, we have up to 11, almost $11.2 million of estate tax exemptions, which means we can pass on asset to the next generation within, as long as it's less than 11.2 million, it's not going to be subject to any estate tax. Okay, so that's right. For us, this estate tax will not come into play. But even with that, other things such as probate, the time-consuming court fees, attorney fees, with that and probate procedure, with that should be enough to motivate you to do some proper planning as well. We're going to talk about a lot of things about planning this 
in, in this segment. I will tell you the key document, key important document that you must have in order to avoid probate procedure, in order to make sure that your loved one gets what you want them to have. We're going to, we're going to go over some other planning issue for incapacitation as well, because even though when you are, you're here, but if something happened to you and you cannot making a decision for yourself, either by financially or for medical health issues, you will still need somebody to take care of those um, documents or concern for you. Because otherwise, you know what? You go back to court again. And every time that you go back to court, that's always going to be cost involved. And everything that go through court procedure will become public. That's mean, yes, anybody can go into the courthouse asking to look at the records that you have and they can know all about you. So you don't want, you know, to be a conversation of your neighbor or something like that. So you probably want to have a privacy. So that way you try to stay away from court. So we're going to talk about power of attorney that can help you manage your documentation or your affairs when you're still alive, but you're unable to do it on your own. We're going to talk about a will that will designate who received what and how and when what's the time con concern on that distribution and we're also going to talk a little bit about living trust as well what's a different feature of living trust how do you set it up how you make sure that it will help you accomplish all the goals that you want so besides the family fighting and cause and legal fee that can happen I want to make sure that you understand that Proper estate planning with documentation will avoid all this for you. We let's let's recap that we don't want we want to make sure that when you pass away, your wishes get done. You want to make sure that the asset got dispersed where you want it to be, how you want to be in the orderly, timely manner, and also most cost efficient and tax efficient way. Remember, you want your loved one to think of you, remember you, uh, and enjoy your legacy here. When we're talking about legacy planning, you want to leave them legacy. They, you want them to be happy when they think about you. Happy thought, um, not that when they think of you and they think about headache, that they have to run to court and they have to be in front of the judges, you know, to take care of the stuff and pay the attorney fees and all these unnecessary taxes and costs and fee unnecessary so they're not going to be happy when they think about you right so don't end up like this celebrity that spend out all their fortune for for these unnecessary costs to so be prepared plan all your document make sure that by the time that you leave that you say goodbye or not you're no longer here everybody that receive something from you, think of you, think of you with a smile on that face. It's time for a taste of sunrise. Wow. The chef's impeccable. The food. Amazing. The show, delicious. But you guys put the T E A in teamwork. Taste of Sunrise on Step One TV. I am a Los Angeles designer with cotton and Italian men's shirting. The Littles. And then these things sort of jump out at you. Put us to work. Show us, right. show us how to go. make something. Watch CCN Sunrise on Step 1 TV. At the IMTC, we've trained regular working people like you and turned them into TV stars. Just ask Brian Loftus. And thank you, CCN, for all that you did for me. Signing off, Brian Loftus. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> Madly Tavidian. When I was hired here in my first commercial market, they loved that I had that live experience and that is just priceless for anybody trying to get into this industry. Tracy Leon. I 
think that any investment in Crown City News' program is a benefit to the community and to journalists starting out. And many more. Those folks and others are now working in their dream TV careers, and you can too. We train kids, teens, and adults professional storytelling on TV and on social media. Call 626-344-8314 to join the International Media Training Center today. Now imagine if you are just driving down the road and you get into a car accident. Oh boy, and now you are unconscious. You can't make any decision for yourself, right? You get to the hospital, who going to do all that for you? You in a coma, who going to tell the doctor what kind of treatment that you need or want? Or, you know, if you're going to have to be in a, hospi ha in a hospital or hospitalized for, you know, weeks or months, who are going to pay that bill for you? Who going to run your business for you? Now, without any proper document, you know what going to happen? Your loved one, your spouse, your children must go to court. They have to go to court to get a court order, court appointed, either guardianship, conservatorship for you. That way, the court will appoint someone to take care of your affair for you. But do you really want that? Because when they have that set up, a guardianship doesn't mean that that person can do everything legally. They can do certain things, but if they want to change something, they always have to go back to court again. So it's going to be this back and forth, back and forth, court, hospital, you know, business. So that's also mean too. Every time that you go to court, more expenses. So your money is actually down the drain that way. So in a situation like this, where you st when you're still alive, but something happened that you can no longer handle your own affairs, power of attorneys may be the answer for you. Okay, so you also have to plan for that. Now let's talk about it. What is a power of attorney? Power of attorney is a document that you may have and you can name your agent somebody or your representative, you call agent, representative, to be the person in charge when you cannot do anything on your own. Okay, we normally have power of attorney, two types of power of attorney. One is for health care, and the other one is for financial management. Let's talk about power of attorney for financial management first. Power of attorney for financial management allow you to appoint someone who you can trust to make decision on your finances, asset, affair, running business, changing beneficiary, take out money, write those checks for you, like pay expenses. They have control of everything when you are not available too. And this is a legal document that can give wide power to a person to take care of your own financial affair. So you must be very careful who you are going to appoint as power of attorney. You you got to trust that person. They have, you know, a lot of power to do this thing. But you can name more than one person. Just in case the first person, let's say you have your son as a power of attorney, but he's out of town. You can't do it when you need him or he's unable for some other reason. You can have the successor. You have the second one. You have an alternate. You can name one, two, or three. And for power of attorney, you can also have whether it can become effective right away. The moment that you sign, you can give this power to that person to handle the affair for you right away. Or you can have it set up in such a way we call springing power of attorney, meaning that it's only become effective when you are incapacitated. So if you set it up that way, make sure that you remember to tell to tell your you know agent that if something like that happened, the agent must get the document from your doctor, your physician, to tell them to to say the document must say that oh right now you know you are no longer um, aware or you're no longer able to take care of your own finances. Doctor signed a letter and then attached to the power of attorney document, then it will become effective and they can take it to the bank and do anything for you. Now, the next item is power of attorney for health care. Sometimes we call that advanced medical, advanced medical, advanced health care directive. There are several ways um, to do this. Some other state may have different rules, so you may hear people call it a living will uh, or healthcare directive, healthcare proxy. They're pretty much the same thing. They allow you to appoint an agent 
or representative who can make medical decision for you. In this case, this person also have very wide power. They can take care of, tell the doctor what type of treatment that you may need or want. Your belief, your religious belief, sometimes you may not want certain type of treatment. This person will know and tell the doctor accordingly. Okay, now without this, if you're in a coma and you hear a lot of time when, you know, people would gotta have to be on the uh, feeding machines or um, helping you continue, you know, prolonging your life even though you have no chance of coming back. But without this document, the hospital or doctor have no choice. They would have to keep you on like that. So if you don't want to be in that position or situation, you want to create a power of attorney. And also the most important thing though, with the power of attorney, no matter what it's finances or healthcare, you need to communicate. You must communicate with your agent, your loved one, tell them what you want or what you need before anything happens. Because you know, if you if, even if you set up the paperwork, but you never tell them what you really want, they may not they may still not know accordingly to the document, they still may not know exactly what you want to get done for you. Okay, so besides setting up the document, you want to tell them also your wishes. Under the power of attorney, make sure that you talk to the attorney who set it up for you, whether you want it to be to become effective immediately at that moment or you want it to become effective at some time later on. For example, like I said before, similar to power attorney for financial, you can also have it become a springing power of attorney where you must be incapacitated first, get the document from your doctor, certify that, then the power will become effective. So that means as long as you still can communicate with the doctor, nobody else will make that decision for you. They have to listen to you only. Until the minute that you're no longer able to communicate with your doctor, then the power of attorney or the agent come into play. Okay, that's a springing power of attorney. If you have the one that become immediately effective, this might help for though, for some of you that maybe have a um, situation where it's difficult for you to communicate, okay? Maybe different um, language language barrier, for example, if you don't speak English or it's different um, language, dialect or whatever, you can have power of attorney that become effective immediately so that somebody else that can communicate for you, maybe your children that fluently in, in the language can communicate that for you. That also can be done. So with all these, you need to set it up though, up front. Make sure you understand what you want, talk it through your attorney and get the family member involved. These are important documents to have as far as you still alive, but because this document dies with you. So in the next segment, I will talk about two more documents that you must have for estate planning purposes. We'll be right back here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez. At the IMTC, we've trained regular working people like you and turned them into TV stars. Just ask Brian Loftus. And thank you to CCN for all that you did for me. Signing off, Brian Loftus. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> Natalie Tavidian. When I was hired here in my first commercial market, they loved that I had that live experience and that is just priceless for anybody trying to get into this industry. Tracy Leon. I think that any investment in Crown City News' program is a benefit to the community and to journalists starting out. And many more. Those folks and others are now working in their dream TV careers, and you can too. We train kids, teens, and adults professional storytelling on TV and on social media. Call 626-344-8314 to join the International Media Training Center today. It's time for a taste of sunrise. Wow. The chef's impeccable. The food, amazing. The show, delicious. But you guys put the T-E-A in teamwork. 
Taste of Sunrise on Step One TV. I am a Los Angeles designer with the cotton and Italian men's shirting. The Littles. And then these things sort of jump out at you. Put us to work. Show us, right, show us how to go. make something. Watch CCN Sunrise on Step 1 TV. Welcome back. You are still on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez, with me right here. In the last segment, we talk about power of attorney for healthcare and for financial management. Remember, I told you that power of attorney, it's good when you're still alive, but these power dies with you. So when you die, power stop. So your next question would be, uh-oh, so what do I do now? You know, what, ha what would happen to my asset then after I passed away? Well, then we're gonna talk about the next set of document that's important to you that you must have. You probably want to consider to have a will and a living trust. What are they? Let's break it down. A will, a will is actually a cornerstone of your finance, um, not financial, I'm sorry, for your estate planning. Because when you have a will, a will will be, will be an instruction of how you want your asset to be distributed when you're no longer here. It will give you um, an authorization that you will put on that, you know, for someone that you name as an executor. Okay, we use terminology and executor for, for the will because that person will represent you, will be on in, in, in your position to distribute your asset. That person will know exactly which go to whom, where, and when. You lay it out on your will. And you can even give um, an instruction of what to do with your body as well. You know, what do you want for your funerals, things in that nature. You can put it all on in, in the will. Now, with will though, even though it's a cornerstone piece of your estate planning, sometime when you talk to an attorney, they may say that, hey, you know what, will is not enough. Maybe you should have a living trust or some type of other document to go with that as well. And the reason behind that, because when you have a will, yes, it's given instruction, it prevents fighting in your family, but the drawback of will is that generally, most will must go to probate. What is it? What is probate? Probate is a court procedure that the attorney or your representative have to take your will and file at the court and wait for the court date because the judge have to go over and review your will and they have to put a stamp on it and say, okay, this one is valid, it's validated now. Now your agent can have the power to go out there and do the distribution for you. However, as you know, anything that go to court take long time. So when you have a will, it can take months and months or sometimes even get up to years depending on how much asset and what type of asset that you have in your estate okay so will can take a long time because you have to get into onto a, um, the court calendar for that so with that when you when you involve court and attorney you have fees involved as well so probate fees is normally a statutory fees so what's that mean statutory fee meaning that you can no longer you cannot negotiate it's a set fees and in general, in California, probate fee can be anywhere uh, on average about 5 to 7% of the fair market value of your, your estate, the total gross estate. We talk about gross estate before we deduct any you know, mortgage or any liability that you have. Okay? So when you're look looking at that fees and time consuming, Wow, that can cost a lot of money, so maybe will may not be enough for that, okay? Even though it will help, but it might not be the best choice for you. So now, if you have an asset and you want to pass it on to your beneficiary without probate, what do you do? In that case, you might want to consider a, a trust instead of a will. What is a trust? A trust is actually a legal contract. A legal contract that you set up between you 
a grantor or a trust or a trustor. You set up a, a contract, you're drawing a document that we call trust agreement, or sometimes people call a declaration of trust. They are the same thing. You set it up, you have a document, and you set up a contract for you as a trustor and the trustee. The trustee, when you're alive, the trustee is the person that manages your affair or your estate. Okay, so when you're still alive, you can be both trustor and trustee. But you will name a successor. You will name a person who next in line, when you're no longer here, that person will fit in your shoes. They take your step and they become the trustee and take care of your affair. Now, because of a trust is a legal contract, if you execute it properly, it will become valid and it have long life expectancy beyond you. So when you passed away, your trust still alive. With that in mind, you don't have to go to court. Your beneficiary no longer have to go to court. The trustee can just go in and step in and take care of the asset distribution for you. And the trust is a contract that you set up for a person, to, for a person, a trustee to manage and distribute the asset that be, that used to belong to you for the benefit of your beneficiaries. So you can list many people as possible as you want in the trust as your beneficiary. And not only that, a trust document is very flexible. That's why we call it living trust. Because you, as, as long as you're still alive, while you're still alive, you can amend your trust, you can change it, you can even revoke it. If you don't like it anymore, you can revoke that trust, bring write up a new one. So it's a very, very um, flexible documentation that you may, that you can have. Even if you have just one property in California, I want you to start considering having a living trust. The reason is, for example, if you have a house, here in California, we're talking about at least, perhaps maybe your value of your house would be like about $300,000. A $300,000 estate, if you have to go to probate, the probate fees will start off at 4% on the first $100,000. So after all, we go with the gross value of the estate, okay? It doesn't matter whether you have mortgage on your house or not. So then your probate fee can start from that point on you can you can see that it already can cost a lot of money so living trust can help you avoid all that so living trust as a recap it's something that you should have because it's help you settle down give out the instruction who will be your beneficiary who will get what you want to distribute at the end of your life you know who get what in an orderly manner and it's timely because it avoid probate and it's very cost efficient since you don't have to pay all those unnecessary fees okay so as as we talk about here will and trust should be a cornerstone pieces of your estate planning part as a financial advisor i'm here to help you so if you have any questions or comment, send it to me by email to emmy at ehfinancial.com. Don't forget, if you miss any part of the show, you can watch us again on ehfinancial.com or crowncitynetwork.com. Remember, being smart with your money is easy, and you can do it. Thanks for watching. See you next time right here on Smart Money with Emmy Hernandez.